Hello everyone, this is Steven Forte here, and we are doing a tutorial today in Photoshop. Um, we're going to be using Photoshop CS6, but there, uh, what we're going to do in here is pretty basic, and you should be able to do it with any of the Photoshops. Um, the earliest version that I've used was CS3. But I've had CS3, CS5, and now I'm using CS6. And I could do all of these things with all of those programs. Um, so the things that we'll learn how to do is how to set up your workspace, um, where to look for your tools at, how to remove a shadow, how to replace a background, and what it means to refine edges. Um, Oh, and also how to use the quick selection tool and we'll also learn how to import and export a photo um, as a JPEG once we get finished okay so let's get right into it alright so first we're, we're going to uh, import a photo so there's multiple ways to do it um, some people like to do it this way you go file all the way up to the top left actually yeah we'll do that first file all the way to the top left and then import um now that's one way to do it or you can actually no you want to go file open and once you go to open it's going to bring you to your folders and my folder for this is under videos and it's in ps tutorials and this is the photo I want so I'll show you another way to do it. All right. So we'll minimize this, and we'll go into our uh, window or file explorer, and I'll go to my videos, and I'll go to PS Tutorials, and I'm just gonna left mouse click and drag it over into Photoshop, and I'm just gonna drop it. And once I let it go, it puts it right in there where I wanted it. Um, I'm going to select my hand tool down here. If you left click on any tool and hold it down, it'll show you other tools that are underneath of it. Okay. And I'm going to drag this. Actually, I'm not going to drag it. But say if this was a lot bigger, say if it was at 200% uh, and I needed to see something at the top. And my hand tool would allow me to drag it around to wherever I wanted it. All right, but we're working with it at 50%. So I'll leave it at 50%, and it can stay there like that. All right. So I'm gonna select my uh, move tool or click V on the keyboard, which is the shortcut for the move tool. All right. So now that we have it in here, um, I'm gonna double click on the background layer so that I can rename it. I'm just gonna name it layer zero. Then I'm gonna left I mean right mouse click on it and duplicate layer. The reason for duplicating the layer is so that I anything that I do to uh, this photo, if I get to a point and I want to undo it and I can't get back to the beginning or where I started from, as long as I'm working on a copy of the layer then I'm not affecting the uh, bottom layer. Now in order to make a layer transparent then we just uh, click on or make it disappear we click on the eyeball and to make it reappear we click on the eyeball. Now this section here is called your layer palette or your layer window as you can see right here uh, layers. Alright um, any of now alright so let's go to uh, Let's go to how to set up your workspace. So if you go to up to the top and click on window and click on workspace. Now I have mine set to 3D right now, but you may not be able to work in 3D. You might may want to work with uh, with the photography window or the photography setup. Now if you do this and say you may have wanted your tools this is your tools uh, your tool palette here and you want your tools on the right hand side so you can work everything from the right you just click where this little dotted line is 
and you're gonna drag you're gonna left mouse click on it and drag it over to your right hand side until you see the blue line and you can just drop it there and it'll dock it um, right where you're at um, or you can go to say now let's go back to window and we're gonna go to essentials and that's gonna move some things around it's gonna adjust a few things or we can go to window workspace and say typography if I just wanted to work on say my text and so I was going to insert my text tools so that once I go on here I can just start typing things and I can put words on the screen and things like that but I'm so used to working in my 3D workspace that I would rather do that but instead of doing that I'll just work with my essentials so that everyone whether they have extended or whether they don't have the extended version they can still follow along so everybody should be able to follow along pretty simply and easily so that's how we do the workspace and with the tools they are right here I drug mine again over to the right hand side just to make it easier for myself alright because I'm used to working from the right side of the of the, uh, the screen alright so with the top layer selected the way we make sure it's selected is making sure that it's it's blue alright and so with that layer selected I want to go to my quick selection tool now you may not see your quick selection tool there um, so you want to make sure you click on it and you may have your wand tool or your magic wand tool there but you want to make sure you click on it and hold it down with your left mouse click and then you want to click on it or you could just could have just pressed W which is the shortcut for it and um, we can change the uh, size of our brush or our selection by going up here to the left hand side and clicking on the click to open or clicking on the drop down window and that'll let us know what size our brush is or what size our selection is mine is only at 10 pixels right now and I think that is a, a good size for what I'm trying to do so I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna use the quick selection tool and how it works is it clicks on and it 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 um it verifies the colors and so it goes by the colors that you're selecting so I'm gonna click on this top part of the the picture and the entire character of the young man alright so I'm gonna left mouse click and it's gonna begin to select it for me and it's gonna allow me to select everything that I want in the photo and so I'm just dragging it I'm not picking up my finger and replacing it I'm just dragging it as it is right now I'm gonna make sure I get every little part of this young man and I'm going to alt click so I'm going to press down alt and then I'm going to select in the center where it didn't take or it uh, had the white selected as well alright so we got that alright so then we're going to go up to your select uh, the select box and click on select I'm going to go down to refine edge I'm going to click on it. All right. Now, in this section or in this portion of it, you can see that you have uh, up here where it says view mode. Now, there's a couple of things, a couple of tools in here. You have view, where if you click on this little drop down window, you can see it where it looks like marching ants, like when we just did the quick selection tool. You can do it as overlay, so it'll show you what it would look like if you were to just take out. Um, like if you were to just keep the the selection you can look at it over black as it was when we first clicked on here you can look at it over white to see what it would look like if you were to just put a white absolute white background you can look at it as black and white to see how uh, it's considered a mask you can look at it on a transparent layer or you can look at it under reveal in layer alright so we're gonna look at it over black alright and then we're gonna 
click on the drop down menu again and the only tool that we're going to use in here is feather all right so i'm going to feather it up to about say 1.2 because i want it to be smooth around the edges and i don't want it to uh um, I'm going to replace the background or we're going to replace the background with a color that's similar to the, the background color that we had before. OK. And so once we get it to that, now we could have smoothed the edge or feathered it more or less. We could have added more contrast if that's what we wanted. Or we could have shifted the edge to make sure that it was very smooth around him to make sure that it was black and we saw no white. But I think this is very good for what we're going to do with it. So we're going to just click OK. All right. And once we do that, then we're just going to go down to on the bottom. There's something called the um, the add layer mask. So once we have that selected, there's a couple ways that we could do this. All right. So a de destructive way of doing it would be using the invert button or invert uh, sh keystroke so you can go to select and inverse or a shortcut for that would be control shift I which inverts um, everything that we selected and we can just delete it now I'll use command Z to bring that back because I don't want to do that I don't want to do it that way. What I would rather do is just use the quick selection. So I'll Command Shift I again to get it back on. Oops, I undocked my window. Yes, everything moves here, just as you can see. All right. So I'll Command Shift I, and I got it back to normal. And now I just want to click the quick selection, or click the uh, add layer mask down at the bottom and now it made everything around him disappear just like when I control shift I and press delete alright so now we're going to turn on the background layer or the bottom layer again right and make sure that our blue or our highlight is clicked on that layer by selecting it Okay, so now that we have our um, background layer taken out, um, we can toggle on the transparency or with the background layer um, still in place. Um, now what we want to do is we want to turn on our background layer, so the one that says layer, and let's go to our um, our little what are they called the foreground color or background color and they can be usually they'll be at black and white um, preset and so I'll go from there and I'll turn this one white so that you guys can see how I'm going to get oops I said white didn't I so I can show you guys how I'll get my color to where I want it to be Alright, so I'm going to click on the foreground color, and then I'm not going to select the color from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the left-hand side, and you see that my cursor or my move tool has turned to an eyedropper. So once I click on a color, it's going to select that color, and it's going to turn my color or my, uh, my color that's going to be my background or foreground color to the color that I selected. And I'm trying to get it to be a um, a medium color, like somewhere around, uh, like a medium color around the young man over here on the screen. So I'm going to click OK, and it's already picked that color for me, right? So now I'm going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to select a new layer. All right, so it's the paper or the one that looks like a page, and we're going to select that. We're going to make our bottom layer transparent again and make sure that we're still selected on the one that says layer one. Let's change that to BG for background. So double click on the name of the layer so that you can change the name of the layer. 
So with that layer selected, now we're going to go to our gallon tool or our paint bucket tool. So you'll look for either the paint bucket tool or the, the gradient tool. And we're just going to hold it down. It'll bring up our other tools underneath. And we're going to select the paint bucket tool. So now, as long as we're selected on this layer here, the center layer that says BG for background, we can just go ahead and click over here in any space on here. And it's going to turn the background to that color, color that I had pre-selected. Okay, so if we say go ahead and we turn on our background or our bottom layer again, then we can see what we just did. So we can, with this, uh, click on the eyeball on the background layer and turn it off, and you'll see the shadow there. Turn it back on, you see the shadow has disappeared. Turn it off and turn it on. All right, so that's it. Um, that's pretty much it for that and what we can do um, other than that if you want to say a different color background like let's uh, go ahead and try that one we'll make a another layer <coughs> we'll make this background layer uh, transparent and let's do we'll hold down the paint bucket tool and we'll go to gradient tool. Um, it may not come up this color, but this is this will be your gradient tool um, up here on the left hand side. And you have a couple different options for your gradient tool. You have linear, you have radial, you have angled, reflected, and diamond gradients. All right, and so I think the one that I'm selected on now is a custom gradient that I made, but you can select from any here, or you can select or click on the settings, and then you can go to different uh, options that you have down in here for your gradients. For this purpose, I'm just going to choose the one that I have, and I'm just going to, with the layer one selected on, I'm just going to start here, and I'm just going to click down on my left mouse button, and I'm just going to drag it across until there. And so then we see, there we see that it turned him or turned the background into this different color. Now, I could have changed it a little bit. I could have went the opposite way, or I could have gone straight across, or I could have gone up. I mean, there's so many different, um, different variations that you could have done to make it look however, whatever you want it to be like. Again, I suggest playing with it to figure out um, how exactly you want it to be so that you can get it to where, um, to where you want your picture to look like. And we'll go over some more tools uh, at a later time or at a later, uh, in a later video that will help you even with this picture or something so simple to turn it to something totally different than what you could have even imagined. Photoshop is a very powerful tool and if you're into photo editing or creating documents I believe that Photoshop will definitely help you to do um, the things that you want to do and help you take your photography or your photo editing to a whole nother level. Alright, so I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful for you guys. Um, like don't forget to like uh, the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can keep doing more videos for you guys. Alright, have a great day.